ladies and gentlemen, it is that time! I gotta tell you, standing on stage are the guy as handsome as this. I, I, I can't even stand it. They sound a little strange when I say that, but handsome, fashion icon, goaltender, resident trophy winner, Stanley Cup finalist, I play America! Put your hands together for number 30! Feels great. Yeah. Uh, honestly, um, you know, we, we had an early practice this morning. Uh, tough one last night. So today is more about just recharging, and it actually feels really good job here with the fans and uh, just have some fun and then and get ready for tomorrow. It's an early one tomorrow. So, Absolutely. Yeah. 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 so, so I gotta ask you before we turn it over to the audience here, you know, you're really getting to a point in your career where you're reaching some really monumental miles, milestones, not only in the record book, but in so many different categories. Do you have a sense and an awareness of how special a place you're becoming and getting to the, a different, kind of a whole different level? Um, I don't think you, like every day, you don't think about where you are right now. You just try to prepare for the next game, you try to have your practice, you try to you know, live in the moment, but you definitely have you know, moments where you where you take a step back and, and think about where you are, how you got here, and who, who's helped you, and uh, obviously it's pretty cool to to reach uh, certain milestones. And, and uh, you know, when you see the names, um, for example, when when, when I tied Dominic Kasha a couple of years ago, that that, that was a guy I uh, idolized growing up. There was so many things about his game that I that I loved. Uh, the dominator. Um, oh, shit. Yeah, That's right. I, yeah. I think he's one of the best goalies of all time. And uh, when you reach a guy like that that meant so much to you personally, that's really a time where you, you think about, you know, okay, how did I get here? So we have another goaltender hanging from the rafters at Madison Square Garden. That would be Eddie Jockman. We're not going to talk, we're, like you said, we're going to keep it in the moment. But the way you're going, my friends, the sky's the limit. Thanks so much for being here, Mike. Yeah! I know you have a couple quick questions. For Henry, I'm going to jump down and take a seat, and I'll give you the mic. one of your influential uh, idols as you, as you grow up. Um, was it mostly uh, European style goaltenders, or, or the whole USSR goalies, or, or who inspired you most? Well, yeah, you have to remember, I grew up in in the 80s, I was a kid, started to skate, and we didn't have a lot of uh, hockey channels. Um, it was hard to, to keep up with NHL, so my first idol was Peter Lindmark. He was a great goal in Sweden at the time. Um, as I got older, um, my TV went from three channels to six channels, so I, I was able to watch more hockey. Um, and I started to pay attention to especially Dominic Kashuk and, and Patrick Raw, and uh, a lot of it was how they competed, and, and um, you know they could be the difference in so many games. Um, and, and I just loved the way they um, played the game. And there was a lot of things I watched on TV or clips here and there that I haven't seen before, and I tried it in practice and. Um, so good, so bad with that, right? Yeah, well, I, I still try to learn. I, you know, I'm, I'm turning 37 here in a few months, but you still try to learn and get better, and, and the game is always changing. So you pick up a lot of things by watching other goalies, and uh, I started to do that when I was 10 years old, and I still do it, and, and especially those two guys, watching them, and. Um, you know, there's so many things that you, you can try and see if it works for you, and then um, you move on. So last night, late game, tomorrow's another game. Um, 
and there's, I'm sure there's some goalie parents out there. For you, uh, what is a typical day-to-day -day prep? Like, what do you wake up in the morning throughout the day until you have the morning skate on shore? But how does your typical prep day go? And, and to get your mind set for the game, what do you normally do? Well, it's very different uh, when you play a 7 o'clock and a 12.30 uh, game, obviously, because on a late game, you have the whole day, but the pre-game meal, you take a nap in the afternoon, you, um, you rest, on, and a lot of time, that nap is, is so important for us guys, because we lose so much sleep after games, it's hard to, to fall asleep because your brain keeps working, so... You know, that afternoon nap is it's crucial. Uh, but when you do have the, the, the early game, you just have to make sure you get in, get in bed early. And, and um, I mean, tomorrow morning, it's just a, ready to eat a big breakfast and then go to the rink and try to wake up. Sometimes it's hard to really uh, get the legs going early, so you, you want to make sure you get a good warm up and, and get your head in the game. Um, but it, it, it changed a lot, I think, when, when it's that early. Yeah, yeah. My, my goalies usually when they get warmed up during practice and all that, they, my players will try to take headshots at them, and that usually yeah. wakes them right off. Right? Yeah, it can work. <laughs> yeah, you pay them to the and you get really angry, and then, yeah. then, then, you're, then you're going. Yeah. So uh, typically hockey players are pretty stu superstitious people, right? Like we have our own way of getting dressed every day, and our own way of doing things. So like, do you have any of your own little quirks that you do? One of my goals used to put a puck down on a white paper and stare at it before a game, and what do you got? I think we all have different things. We play so many games, We a lot of it is just routine. You're comfortable having your certain things you do to prepare yourself for a game. Uh, and a lot of it is just because you want, you want to deal with the pressure that you feel, the excitement, there's so many emotions when you when you go into a game so how, how do you deal with that I, I think that's the key for any pro athlete everybody practice everybody prepare but how do you deal with your emotion under pressure how do you deal with the ups and downs and to have your routine have your certain things you do before the game during the game to keep you in the right place mentally is really what's going to decide if you're going to have a good or a bad game it's not if you work harder or, or smarter a lot of times the day before, the week before, because everybody works hard at this level. It comes down to your mind. And your mind is such a big part of this game, especially for a goalie. So I have a lot of things going on in my preparation uh, during the game that helps me stay in that place. Um, are you still learning? You would think after 13 years in the league here, you, you know it. But you don't. You constantly change your expectations, change your how you feel, your, your, where the team is at. There's so many things that change from year to year, from day to day, that makes this an ongoing process. So uh, that's the challenge, to stay in that right mindset, but it's also, I think, a fun challenge. Awesome. Well, good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Salah, Mike, you thanks so much for going with Mike. We've got a bunch of Henrik, a bunch of Blue Shirts fans chomping at the bit with questions. So we're going to go out here and see, uh, oh my gosh, it's still in. It's still in. Henrik, watch out for this guy. Double the Trump. Dylan, how you doing, bud? I'm your number one fan. Say that again. Are we going tomorrow? Are you coming? Well, when, um, when, when you all make like, nice things, how do you feel? Wait, one more time? When you make, like, say, like, against, say again, when, against the stars, <laughs> how, how, did you, how, how do you, like, move your, um, how do you, like, go so fast? <laughs> how do you react so quickly? Um, good question. Good question. Well, practice. Um, a lot of things are not reactions, more reading of the shots. And sometimes it make, it's really tough to make a save when you don't see the shot the whole way. If there's a little screen or just a stick sometimes in the way, it could make a huge difference how you read that shot, where the puck is going. If it's going high or low. Uh, you anticipate as a goal. You can, I can almost see the angle of the stick and how they lean into the shot where the puck is going. So if you don't see that, if a guy just 
skates right by you, right before he shoots the puck. The save is so much harder to make. So, um, but to really answer your question, practice. <laughs> and, and of course, the X factor, Dylan. You get wins in course. every game. <laughs> so I'm thinking maybe the new Ranger mascot. Hey, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. All right, great question, Dylan. Your star continues to rise. Who's got a question for Henry? Hi, how are you doing? Good. What's your name? Tina. Tina, where are you from? Uh, Pennsylvania. Tina from Pennsylvania. What's your question for Henry? Um, I just want to say thank you, the Rangers, and like professional hockey players as a whole for being such good role models. I mean, like, so yes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> don't really get in trouble as much as they'll <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think um, it starts with the organization, the Rangers. You know, they're the first class organization and they take a lot of pride in, in doing the right thing um, on and off the ice and that helps obviously, but it's also who you surround yourself with. I think uh, of all the teams I've been on, you know, respect your teammates, but for other people, it's huge. And if you have, if you start with just respect for other people, I think it goes a long way. And you, you understand, you know, working as a group and how that affects other people and it affects the room. Um, so I think the sport itself too, I think helps a lot of people understand the importance of treating people with, with, with the right mindset and respect. I see a lot of humility in hockey players too, Henrik. Like, on the ice, warriors. Off the ice, it's a very selfless approach to life and the game. I don't think I've ever seen a post-game interview where you or somebody who's got a game-winning goal or a shutout, hey, you were standing on your head tonight, how did you do it? Well, my teammates, no, my teammates did this, my teammates. It's never about them, is that fair to say? There's a lot of humility if it's part of the culture and fabric. Yeah, I think you grow up understanding that you can't win on your own. You never lose on your own, so why would you win on your own? It's a group thing and that's why we love this sport. We love competing and as a goalie, at times, it feels like you're doing your own thing, but the big picture really is we're doing this together, and it makes it so special when you win big games or have a good stretch, it's because as a group, you, you get it together. And not fair to compare, but there's a lot of me, me, me in other sports. Just saying, just saying. You guys are the best in the NHL. Hi, what's your name? Hi, my name is Alexandria. Where are you from? I'm from Long Island. Alexandria from Long Island. With the Rangers jersey. All right, what's your question? <laughs> so, I, as a Ranger fan, we just I just want to say thank you for being totally committed to the New York Rangers and staying in New York. I know there's been a lot of talk about what it's been. So, so, my question is, what is your favorite New York activity to do with your family? Uh -huh. You're not my yeah. Um, <laughs> so much to do. There is a lot to do. Um, well, when, when you have young kids, it's not so much what, what I love, it's more what they love. And that makes me happy. When I see they're, they're excited, you know, it, it doesn't really matter what we do. And, and um, they love actually to go skating. They think it's the best. Uh, we don't do it all the time, but we, we try to go to the rink once in a while and, and, and have fun. Um, it's funny though that the staff at the rink always laugh when I come in on a day off to go to the rink because <laughs> I'm with my kids. But um, they're at an age, they're three and six now. Um, they're at an age where, uh, as a parent, when you see their excitement, it's, uh, it's a cool feeling. Uh, but a lot of days off too, we just try to stay at home and spend time together. Um, Do your kids play? Do your kids play hockey? Uh, my kids, no, they don't play hockey, but they, they, I think they start to understand the game a little bit more. Um, they uh, definitely, uh, you know, a few times now told me I'm not, 
traveling too much and away too much and uh -huh. stuff like that. And then as a parent, obviously, try to explain why I'm away. I, I love the game. It's my work. I've been doing this for for a long time. Um, early on, they didn't really understand, but I think now they're at a point where they, they start to get it, at least the, the six-year-old. Yeah. So, um, it, it's fun to see them grow up in, in, in New York City. It's definitely a different place. Uh, I grew up in a really small town, uh, and for them to get this opportunity to be in, the, I think, the greatest city in the world, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, all right, we've got another question. This is the lovely Annie from Staten Island. I don't want to embarrass Annie, but she said, John, I'm shaking up for her. But she's fine. I said, you're going to be fine. So to make her more nervous, I brought her all in. All right, so what's your question? Most memorable moment. There's been lots. Well, I think there, there's a few. I, I can't really pick one. Uh, you know, my, my last game in Sweden was um, I was 23 and we won the championship in overtime. And it was kind of a, a big step for me. I knew the next step for me was coming to New York. So I always remember that. It was, it was a big moment in my career to end that year for the championship, but come here, play the first game as a Ranger, huge deal to me, it was a dream come true. Um, and then we had a lot of fun runs in the playoffs, you know, winning against Montreal at home game six, really, so you were going to yeah. that final, that's the game I never forget. Um, gold medal game, right? Your gold medal game. Gold medal game, medal game uh, Olympics, 06, and also two years ago, I, an opportunity to play with my brother again um, for the first time in about 12 years or so. And we ended up winning the World Championships together. That was also uh, a very special moment. That wasn't too bad, Andy. Great job. All right, Henry, thanks. We're going to move on, Andy. Excellent work. Man. Yep. You're going to be okay? You're all right? All right. Okay. And she's crying. Oh my God. Tears of joy. All right. Thank you, sweetheart. Hi, what's your name? Stephanie. And where are you from? Bradley Beach. Stephanie from Bradley Beach. Henry. Um, I was wondering, because it's such a grueling season throughout the year, how much time does it take off when the season ends, and how much work do you have to put in uh, during the off season to keep yourself in health form come back? Great question. Well, I think it depends when the season ends, how it ends. Uh, this year, uh, we're up to last season, I had a injection in my knee, so I took four to five weeks off, and then I started skating right away. I worked out more probably this summer than I had in, in years, so I felt really good coming into this season. And, um, I think you always have to evaluate how your body feels and where you're at um, every summer, and, and obviously last year I ended way too early, so I felt like I, I had more time. I needed to prepare myself even more, and then I had an opportunity to do so because my body felt better. Um, during the summer, I, I try to skate, obviously, but not too early. You want to get away from the game a little bit. So I play a lot of tennis, I work out, and, and uh, just try to make sure your, your body and your mind feels like it's in a good place uh, when it comes to you know late August. Usually, that's when I come back from New York and start preparing for camp. But I usually start skating in July. Thanks for your question. We're over here now, Henrik. So I asked our next question asker. I said, so where are you from? He said, I'm also from Staten Island. I said, what's your name? Timothy. And then I said, how old are you? And he said, eight. Wait, hold on. I turned nine yesterday. I totally forgot. Anyway, it's all too overwhelming for everybody. So what is your question, birthday boy belated? What would they be? Great question. I like the energy. Nice. Um, well, I, I think there's no shortcuts, obviously, to if you want to reach really far. You have to work. You have to commit to something. You have to commit to training, to playing the game, uh, and it's not something that just you know, works when, when, when everything feels good and, and, and you're winning. 
you're gonna have moments where when things are really tough and things are going against you, and that's really when you have to dig a little deeper. And I think that's the biggest challenge uh, when you're a kid to realize, you know, now is the time to really work a little bit harder, and, and um, it will make you a better player and a stronger athlete. I think when, when you understand to over overcome challenges. Um, so. My biggest advice would be to, when things go really tough, work even harder. That's my Diane from Jackson, Henrik. Diane, your point. <laughs> Personally, yourself. My second part is, can you teach us how to, how to chant, let's go Rangers in Swedish? <laughs> Ooh, that's a unique question. Okay, uh, question one. Um, I don't think I've been in a huge fight. I mean, there's been some incidents in front of the net a couple of times, but I never really dropped the gloves or... What? My gloves sit pretty tight, so it would take a lot of time for me to get it off. I'll fight the net, but maybe not the players. I have guys that can do that. Um, now, there's definitely moments where you, where you try to control your emotions, and, and it's hard. It's a game of emotions, so uh, there's that. Yeah, you know, but I think that's the beauty of the sport. Uh, a hockey game without emotion is not a good hockey game. So uh, I, I feel it out there. I, I you know, sometimes I, I get really angry and I just try to control it. Um, and uh, the second question, let's say, I, mean, I, I don't know. But you say that in Swedish, really good. Well, that's, that's something else. <laughs> um, you can say, hey ya, hey ya Rangers. Hey ya Rangers. Can we use the sign as good at all? Can we just do the English version for, for 10, 10 seconds? Let's go Rangers! Let's go Rangers! Let's go Rangers! As much as I love Sweden and Swedish, the Swedish language, that sounds a little more like that. Who's yeah, that? Right. Um, who's that? Jacob, you're back. What's going on? What's your question for her? Henrik, what's the difference with working with David Quinn than Van Vejo? That's a good question. You know, we, every time you have an opportunity to work with new coaches, you, you learn a lot. You say you approach the game a little bit different. Um, and I've been fortunate to work with a lot of good coaches and, and they all have their own style, their own mindset. And it, you know, it's how you practice, it's how they talk to the team, it's tactical stuff. Um, I would say the biggest difference, Quinny is, he loves to teach the game. Uh, and you could see that he, he's been working with a lot of young players for a while. So he loves to really uh, break it down and, and a lot of one-on-one -on -one talks on the ice, off the ice. Uh, I would say that's the biggest difference. Okay, Jacob, great question. And your name? Devin. We've got Devin. What's your question? I know I have favorite teammates, so what's your favorite teammate? Uh -huh. Favorite teammate? Uh -huh. favorite teammate? Uh, so he's, uh, he's, um, he's a nice guy. He's a funny guy. You know what I love most about him? He, he competes really hard and he, he wants to win uh, every night. And that, that's something that I appreciate. Uh, and I've known him for, for a long time now. You know, I've got an opportunity to play with him for, for a few years. And obviously, 
you get to know each other pretty well, how you, how you work as a person and as a player, and how you deal with pressure, with ups and downs. And, and I think when you, when you get that opportunity to be close to someone and experience a lot of different things, that's really when you get to know someone. And uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I really enjoy uh, having on the team and, and, and also be away from the link and spend time with it. So, okay. We have another uh, nearly in tears shaking. Uh, no, the shaking part, I got that right. I think it's adorable. Justin Bieber levels at this point. I don't know. I don't know. Thank you for your question. Hi, guys. What's your name? Rihanna. Rihanna and Gabriella. I don't know. I don't know. We're here. Say hello to Henrik and give us your question. What was it like playing on the ice against your bro twin brother? What? Um. Yeah, I remember the first time it happened. We played it uh, against Dallas. 2007, I think. Because he stayed in Sweden for one more year. I came there 05. He came 06, 07. So um, it was surreal. You know, I, I played every game, every practice on the same team with my brother. You know, growing up, it was junior team, and national team, pro team for so many years, and suddenly. I was playing against him um, in the NHL, so it, w it was a dream come true, uh, but at the same time there was a lot of emotions and um, I was very nervous too, uh, very nervous, but it, it, it was a very cool experience. Okay, all right, also breaking news, we have another set of twins, we have the Lundquist twins, and we, what is your last name? Scotto and the Scotto Twins! <laughs> Unbelievable! Wait, did you, did you have a question? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know these twins, they don't go anywhere without one another, right? All right, good job. Well, where am I going here? Next? Okay, hi. Ooh. Look at this shirt, Henry. I don't know. I don't know. She's not messing around. He's not messing around. And she's grabbing the mic from me. That want to take Sidney Crosby. And, <laughs> I'm a Christian, so I'm not going to say. Um, the classic with you and Sidney Crosby was when you took the water bottle and went on and let me turn it on. But I just got to say, you have been my main man for a long time. And uh, I'll see you January 2nd. Nice. All right. Well said. All right, wait. Oh, I promise this girl over here. You know, everyone's going to hate me if I don't get to them, but right here. See, I remember. Hi, what's your name? Sharon. Sharon. Um, I wanted to know, uh, how often do you get back to Sweden? Do you get to see your brother? Um, so I go back to Sweden every summer. Once the season starts, but there, there's no time, obviously. Um, so we, we try to go back uh, mid-June, uh, that's usually uh, the plan, we just spend two to three months there and we have a lot of friends there and uh, my brother uh, lives in the area too. Um, and obviously that's the one thing you miss when you when you live over here, it's your friends and family, but other than that I feel like this is my home now and I have everything I need to, to have a good good life. But the summertime is so important for that reason to go home, and especially now too, to have, when, when we have two young kids, we want to make sure they experience Sweden and, and under, understand where um, where we're coming from. And it's a it's a different world. Okay, moving on. Your name? Right. Right. What's your question? The question is: When you first started uh, playing for the Rangers, what is there a former player that you looked up to, your wife, like or somebody? Well, when I came 05, obviously the big guy was Yager. He was the big star. And growing up, he was 
the big star and suddenly I was playing on the same team. So obviously you you watched him a lot. You you paid attention to how he trained, prepared. Um, you know, he, he carried this team, especially that first year when he won the scoring title, he helped us make the playoffs. Um, it was just unbelievable to, to have um, you know, that opportunity to play with such a great player. I think he's one of the best players to ever play the game. If you look at his numbers, it's, it's unbelievable. And, um, I think back of it now that, uh, wow, I was lucky to share the locker room with him. He, he, was, he was awesome. He was a great teammate, very nice guy. And, uh, the thing that stood out with him, though, was how hard he worked, not only at the ring, but away from the ring. He really showed everybody why he was the best. Speaking of leaders, you know, since Cali and McDonough have left, no, no one wanted to see in the last couple of seasons. Tell me the importance of that role and how do you compensate for not just having one guy, I'm guessing it's a few guys that have taken on a leadership role, at all for the captains. In the world. Well, I think it makes sense. When you don't have one guy that stands out, this guy should be the captain. I think it makes sense to have a couple guys to carry that role. And, and we're a group now where everybody has to contribute when it comes to helping the group and, and saying the right things and, and, and leading the way. Uh, some years, it's going to be right there. It's going to be obvious uh, to pick for the captain. But I think right now we're in a spot where there's a few of us that have to to help out, um, and that could change fast, but I think right now they made, made the right decision to have this set up. Thank you. Hey, you doing, buddy? What's your name? Yeah. Jack, what's your question? So, um, I remember I was scared of my first ice hockey team, and I just wanted to know if you were scared the first time you played on the Rangers or the Madison Square Ice Garden. Aww. I don't know, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm always nervous. I was nervous when I was nine years old. I'm still nervous going after preseason game. I'm nervous playing every game at the Garden on the road. It doesn't matter. When I step on the ice, I have certain expectations on myself. I know there's a lot of people out there that have expectations on us as a team, on me. Uh, and it makes me nervous. But it's also part of playing the game and how you deal with that feeling that's going to decide if you're going to play good or bad. It's part of playing the game. You should be nervous. You should feel that excitement and you have to be on your toes to, to perform well. Today I don't feel nervous. Today I don't feel you know, like it doesn't matter. I think it's time to do something else. But right now, every game matters. It doesn't matter what game it is, so that, that makes me nervous. So just, just know that it's part of the game. Great question, Jack. What's your name, buddy? Say it again. Iowa. How you doing, bud? What's your question? I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that one to you. <laughs> um, what's your favorite place to play besides New York? Question. Um, there's a lot of good, good rings around, around the league. For different reasons, um, I love playing in Chicago. Great atmosphere and, and good city. Um, it's also fun to go out west. We don't see those teams very often, so uh, you know, as a team, to travel out west and get together and, and do something different um, is, uh, I think, a lot of fun. There's, there's certain cities on the East Coast that you see a lot, you know exactly what to expect from the hotel to fans and, and everything around the game. So that's why I, I love uh, going out west. The Canadian trip is always fun. Out west, Vancouver, and Calgary, and Edmonton. Uh, we only do that trip once a year, so that, that's part of why I enjoy it. All righty. What's your name? I'm Jessica. What's your question for him, right? So your hair looks absolutely 
That's how good he was. He took it for granted every night that he would be the difference maker. And um, I would probably bring him back if I could. Your name? Justin. Yeah. Justin, what's your question? Fellow goalie, beer leader. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so my question is, uh, you went into a little bit about how you changed your style from last year to this year. I want to know, like, what, when did you come to that decision? You know, what, what did you do to, to, to tweak your style? Because it shows your performance. I mean, you're more comfortable in that, you're deeper, like, like the way you've been playing over the last 
what, 13 years, so I want to get into more detail. Well, uh, my game plan has been pretty much the same for 13 years, but I think the last one or two years I got away from it a little bit for different reasons. Um, I started challenging the shooter a little bit more, and part of it, you know, we did give it, give up, uh, maybe a little bit more scoring chances right in the middle, which forced me to come out a little bit more. Uh, but in the end, it's about trust, trusting your instinct, trusting that whatever I'm doing is working. And I think I got away from it a little bit at times. And at times it was working. And uh, to be consistent and to have good result, I think you have to stick to your gut and stick to your, your, your game plan no matter what. And I think that I've been doing a better job of that this year. Um, but it's something you have to work on all the time. And it's obviously tougher when you, when you don't get the result, even though you, you're doing the right thing, but you're not getting the results, that's when it's the toughest to stick with it and not change and not try to do too much. So um, I think working with Benny also my goalie coach, you know, almost every day we talk about my game and we watch tape and point out the good things, the bad things. Um, and, and like I said, try to really stick with, with, with my game plan is something that I work on a lot. Okay, your name? Mark, what's your question? First of all, my wife couldn't make it out today, so I just want to thank you for making me the second most popular guy in the house on being <laughs> And the question, not to put you on the spot, and I know how much the cup means to you, but if you had to choose between another guaranteed shot at the cup or finishing your career here in New York, which way would you go? We don't mean to put you on the spot on you, but... Well, I, I think, first of all, there's no guarantees anymore in this league. It's too competitive. Um, and I, I've said this a bunch of times, uh, the commitment I made a few years ago to this organization and the commitment they made to me, I just feel like this is the place I want to play in my entire career. And, and it hasn't changed. I do that's my biggest goal, my biggest dream. But if it doesn't happen, I know I had a great ride here in New York. So that means a lot to me. Yeah. I know what I'm going to do. Well, we've got Kevin Matthew here, and I think if I don't get over that side of the room, there's going to be a riot. So I want to get Matthew, one over there, and then we're going to have to wrap up the QA. So go, what's your name, son? Matthew. Matthew, let's go. What's your question? Oh. Oh. Excellent job, Matthew. I agree. All right, one more, and then we're going to wrap up the q and I'm sorry we can stay here for hours. I told you I'd come over here. What's your name, buddy? Max. Come up here so Henry can see you. Right here. Max, how old are you, Max? Ten. You look like you're ready to go. You're ready to go. What's your question? My question <laughs> We've got a PowerPoint presentation that we're, we're about to set up. Bear with us, we are having a few terms of the difficulties. Do you think when Gorgias is playing? That's an interesting question. Um, you know what? George, when he plays, I see actually a lot of myself and him, the way he competes in practice, and, and um, I'm happy. I, he works so hard, it's hard not to be happy for the guy. You know, he's doing really well when he comes in and plays, and uh, a lot of it starts with his mindset, and, and he's ready to, to sacrifice a lot to, to be in that spot, so. You know, being a goalie, it is a unique position, obviously. It's only one spot. But at the same time, for us as a team to have success, you need two guys going. You need two guys, you know, helping the team to, to get wins. Otherwise, you won't, you won't have a good year. So you try to push each other when the other guy is playing, or especially in practice when we work together with the goalie coach. You encourage each other, and, and, and that's the way it has to be. And um, I 
again, you need the session, but at the same time, we're a team and we try to do whatever you can to, to help the team and not focus too much on yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause for Henry Thank you. So folks, we're going to start our next phase of the afternoon. All VIP ticket holders, please remain seated. I will call up the next numbers. You're going to make your way back and behind to the photograph and signing area. Henry, you take a couple of minutes. Is that all right? You want to take a few minutes break? And then we'll get started up again. I just want to thank everyone for coming out. To thank you. Thank you so much for the So we need to have a little patience, but at the same time, we want the result. I know we all do. We want it ourselves. Um, but I really believe good things will come. So we, we just have to stick to the process here. And, and, and we're growing as a team. We really are. And the, the young guys are getting better and better. And, and um, I believe in us. So I hope, hope you do too. Yeah! Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. Henry Lundquist.